Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MTGO Traders. My name is Taryn and this is Grixis Amulet Riches. All right, guys, if you haven't checked this out on the test drive, I have a test drive link that I'm going to put at the end of the video to see how this deck actually plays out. But we're going to go over card by card uh, to kind of see what the deck actually does. But an overall, like, uh, I guess, goal of the deck is to win either by a cut to ribbons or revel in riches. Those are the primary win conditions for the deck. Although we do have Scarab God in the deck and that can almost kind of win by itself sometimes uh, because we have so much mana generating uh, with our Grixis control strategy. But before we get into the video guys, make sure you hit the like and the button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and of course hit the bell so you know when we upload a new video and when we go live on the stream, because we do stream on YouTube. So let's get right into the cards. We have four Dire Fleet Hoarder. This is a two mana two one human pirate, and whenever it dies, create a colorless treasure artifact token with, again, ta tap, sacrifice this artifact, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So this is what's gonna be making the deck so much more viable in the mid to late game, because we'll have a lot of treasures and a lot of ways to use those treasures to either do, do Revel and Riches or Ribbons for like 10, 12, 13, and copy it twice. It's ridiculous. But moving on from Dire Fleet Hoarder, we have the Scarab God. This guy is ridiculously powerful uh, and can almost win the game by himself if you have the mana to do it. So this is a five mana five five that you can actually, at the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses X life where you scry X, where X is the number of zombies you control. You can pay four mana, exile target creature card from a graveyard, create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 4-4 black zombie. And then whenever it dies and goes to the graveyard, return it to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. So very difficult to kill, very hard to get rid of, and it can make an army by itself. So the Scarab God is ridiculously powerful uh, for our setup. So do not forget the Scarab God, it's super powerful, but there are only five creatures in the entire deck because this is a control strategy at its heart. So let's move on from the Scarab God and go to three Fatal Push. Again, this is per premium removal. This is great and standard, great and modern. It's such a fantastic removal card for us. It's gonna help get rid of those early game threats, gonna help get rid of any tokens that generated towards us. And of course, because we have treasures on the battlefield a lot, we can often sacrifice a treasure, use a Fatal Push and kill a four mana creature without really having to worry about the Revolt Trigger all that much because the treasure sacrifice is a Revolt Trigger. So. Fatal Push is actually very good in this Grixis strategy. So moving on from Fatal Push, we have two Harness Lightning. Because we have Harness Lightning, Glimmer of Genius, and some Aether Hubs uh, in the in the deck here, uh, the energy we'll actually be producing from Harness Lightning will be enough to either kill a Torrential Gear Hulk, to kill a Combustible Gear Hulk, anything like that, being able to reach up and do some extra punch uh, to a creature we don't like, especially some new dinosaurs in the Niasaurus deck or the Gruel Dinosaurs deck. So Harness Lightning is great removal for that. But moving on from Harness Lightning, we have two Bantu's Last Reckoning. This is like a last ditch effort to clear the board uh, before we either win the game uh, or if we just need to continue to have our strategy so we can draw some cards into our hands. So Bondi's Last Reckoning is great for that. And of course, because we have more treasures on the battlefield, uh, we're actually not really at like in a disadvantage whenever we use Bondi's Last Reckoning. Uh, we'll have so much mana from the treasures that we can continue to play out our following turn without really having a downside. So. Bantu's Last Reckoning is great for that. But moving on from Bantu's Last Reckoning, we have three Supreme Will. This is a great card to counter some spells and a great card to dig through your deck. So Supreme Will is supremely great at doing that. Uh, and there's only three in the deck. So there's not a complete four up because I think it's a little uh, much for being four up in the deck, but the Supreme Will is gonna be digging for our Search for Ascanta. It's gonna be digging for our Revel and Riches. It's gonna be digging for our Primal Amulet, things like that. But we can try and stabilize our strategy. We can continue killing our opponent's creatures and doing things like that. So we can continue moving the game plan forward. But moving on from Supreme Will, we have three Sweltering Suns. This is like Supreme, you know, board wipe removal uh, for the creature heavy but load the ground strategy. So against a Ramen of Bread strategy, against some sort of token based strategy, even like a double Sweltering Suns copied from a Primal Amulet uh, can kill basically every single uh, dinosaur that's on the field right now. But Sweltering Suns overall is super good for us because we can also cycle it away if we don't need it. So moving on from Sweltering Suns, we have two Glimmer of Genius. Again, with the Primal Wellspring, we can actually copy this twice and draw four cards instead of two. Uh, you can scry two and then draw two and then scry two draw two again so it's super fun doing it that way uh, but it also gives us energy as well so that can actually go towards our harness lightning abilities but glimmer of genius is our mid to late game ability to kind of draw into some gas to make sure we can close out the game quite well but moving on from glimmer of genius we have two hour devastation uh, the hazard the fervent deck in Hermit up red is extremely difficult to deal with sometimes and hour devastation with a primal amulet is only four mana so doing a four mana board wipe spell that kills everything that's also indestructible is 
extremely powerful. Uh, and we can also do this against any kind of Planeswalker heavy strategy as well. So our Devastation is great for that too. Uh, but moving on from that, we have three cut to ribbons. This is our primary win condition here with, with the Primal Amulet. So play a cut to kill a creature or kill our own creature to generate a, a treasure. And then in the mid select game, we can ribbons with a flipped Primal Amulet. Uh, and then we can actually duplicate the ribbons to do like 10 and then 20 damage for our opponent going in for the win. So that's the primary win condition for the deck. Uh, but moving on from cut, we have our treasure maps here for artifacts. This is a great way, This again, this is a four. This is a great way to dig through the deck and also get more treasures. So we dig through our deck at the beginning of our upkeep before we draw a card to kind of see what we're about to draw, if we want to draw it or not. We put a counter on this guy, and when there's three, it gives us three treasure tokens. And it actually turns into a land where we can sacrifice it and draw an extra card. So treasure map is extremely powerful for us. It's very good at tempo and very good at if we're very low on the curve or if we have no cards in our hand, we can use a flipped uh, treasure cove to draw some extra cards from those treasures in order to fill up our hand back up with some more gas for removal or maybe help finish off a game with a cut to ribbons for some mana, stuff like that. But moving on from the treasure map, we have three primal amulet. We don't have a four of because having four is a little too unstable for us. We want to make sure there's three of the deck, uh, but it's a four mana artifact. Instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one mana less to cast, which is already amazing. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a charge counter on primal amulet. Then if there are four or more charge counters on it, you may remove those counters and transform it. And whenever it is flipped, it turns into Primal Wellspring, which is a land. Uh, and again, both of these lands so far are not legendary. They're just regular lands. Uh, and you can tap this, add one mana of any mana to your mana pool. When that mana is spent to cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy that spell, and you may choose new targets for the copy. So again, the primary win condition is our cut to ribbon strategy, meaning that we cast cut on something, throw in the graveyard, and then ribbons with the Primal Wellspring and, and copy it twice for the win. So that's our primary win condition. Uh, but we can also use it for any kind of other like removal spell. I remember in testing, uh, and actually yes, earlier today in the stream, I copied Hour of Devastation twice to kill a 7-6 uh, Carnage Tyrant. So it was ridiculously powerful in that way too. So Primal Wellspring is just stupid powerful and make sure to look out for it for sure. And make sure to look out for those abrades because they're gonna be coming for the Primal Wellspring instead of the treasure map. Moving on to the enchantments, we have two Search for Ascanta. This is a super great early game way to filter through your deck and make sure that you're trying to look for the cards that you need. So if you need a mana, this is gonna help you get that. If you don't need a mana, you can toss it into the graveyard. And once you get seven, it flips into another card uh, where you can actually pay three mana, tap it, and search the top four cards, put one into your hand, and then put the rest on the bottom. So it's a great way to filter through your deck uh, in the mid to early game. I definitely think Search for Azkanta is probably one of the best premier blue cards in the uh, set for Ixalan right now. So if you haven't got your set a play set yet, or you haven't got yourself some, I would definitely look into getting some as soon as possible because those prices are going nothing but up. Uh, but moving on from Search for Ascanta, we have two Revel and Riches. This is our secondary win condition for the deck, so we have a ton of ways to make treasure tokens, but Revel and Riches is also going to make sure that whenever we kill something, we also get a token from that as well, too. Overall, Revel and Riches really helps us kind of stabilize our situation, so on the turn four or five that we play this out, unless it gets countered, uh, it's going to help us kind of make sure that when we play stuff, it's, we're still getting mana back to be able to play a follow-up play. So it's a really great way to win, and it's a really fun way to continue playing out your big bombs or your removal spells to make sure we can go for our uh, cut to ribbons like main primary win condition. Uh, but moving on from that, that is actually it for the whole deck. Let's move on to lands. We have three Aether Hub in the deck, uh, and that's gonna be a great way to give us energy for Harness Lightning and a great way to tap for any kind of color that we need, the red, black, or blue. Moving on from Aether Hub, we have four Dragon Skull Summit because this is a great card in Ixalan, of course. And then we have four Drowned Catacombs, which is again, a super great card in Ixalan as well. It's the Buddy Lands. And then we have two Evolving Wilds. So we don't have that many basic lands in the deck, but Evolving Wilds is also here to help trigger Revolt for the Fatal Push, but also help thin our deck just in case we need to, as well as feed into our graveyard for search for Ascanta. So it's doing a number of things here that's really great for us. We also have Field of Ruin. This is a great card to get rid of a Scavenger Grounds if we need it, because we want to make sure we have seven cards for our uh, search for Ascanta, or a great way to get rid of any kind of other flip land that they have on their side of the field, just in case we want to make sure to slow them down too. So if they have a search for Ascanta as well, we can Field of Ruin their search for Ascanta. We can both get some mana that way, and that's that's great. We, we, we get the tempo back, they get mana, it's fine. Moving on from Field of Ruin though, we have three island and then one mountain, and then four Spire Bluff Canal, which is actually from Kaladesh, which is great fast land for us, and then two Swamps. So that is the full 60 of the uh, the deck here. It's super aggressive, it's super like, it's weird because it seems super fast at the early game, because you have Fatal Push, Harness Lightnings, uh, Search for Ascanta, you actually speed up really quickly, and you're gonna be almost always playing a land every turn, basically every single turn until you win the game. 
Uh, if not playing a land, you're getting a treasure token from your Revelin Riches or from your uh, treasure map, things like that. So it's just really aggressive at being able to be really fast. Uh, and that is it for the deck, but let's say like we're going up against a more control heavy strategy that doesn't have any creatures at all, or just has Torrential Gear Hulk, and we just have all these cards that are just dead in our hand. What can we do in the sideboard? So let's move on to the sideboard. We have two Chandra's Defeat. This is going to be helping to deal with uh, any kind of Chandra and Ravenup Red, or any kind of like fast strategy like a Glorybringer, things like that. This is a great way to deal with that. We also have two of Braid to help deal with any kind of Gear Hulk situation, because Gear Hulks are still a pain in the butt, but also God Pharaoh's Gift is a thing still, and a Braid is going to help deal with that handily as well. So they have uh, all the creatures in their graveyard, they sacrifice put a Godfrey's Gift on the field, and then you just debride it immediately, and then all that work went for nothing. So I think that's a great way to handle it too. So a braid is in here for that. Then we have two Essence Scatter. Again, this is a more creature-heavy strategy we want to be dealing with, so that one-off Torrential Gearhawk, maybe we can put it in there for that. Uh, but more often than not, we're going to be wanting to cast this against a Niasaurus deck when they have really cheap dinosaurs coming into the battlefield. But moving on from Ice and Scatter, we have two Negate. This is a great way to go up against any kind of like fighting for counters. Uh, so if that we play something, they counter, then we counter that, then they counter, then we counter that with a Negate. That's what you do. Negate is one of those cards that's going to definitely win the counter war for you if you're against a control strategy, and that's why it's in the sideboard. Then we're moving on from two Disallow. This is going to help any kind of like secondary ability, any kind of Planeswalker ability, a Nicobolus ability, things like that. Disallow can also help us against like a Mirror Match situation where if they're trying to ribbons us again, we can just disallow their ribbons activation. So Disallow is great for that as well. Moving on from that, we have two Unlicensed Disintegrations. So if we're up against a more creature heavy strategy, Unlicensed Disintegration is gonna actually destroy a creature. And because we have so many artifacts on our battlefield, uh, Unlicensed Disintegration is gonna do three damage to that target's controller. So it's gonna be dealing three extra damage to that player. And that can also help us if there's a Revelant Riches on the battlefield, it gives us a Revelant Riches uh, treasure token. It gives does three damage to them and it also kills their creature outright. So, and if we have Primal Wellspring on the battlefield, we can actually ca uh, copy this twice. So there's just so many different interactions in this deck. It's insane. But moving on from this card, we have two Vraska's Contempt. This is a way to get rid of any kind of like uh, Planeswalker we don't like or any kind of uh, god that we don't like at all. So Hazret the Fervent is definitely a reason to bring Vraska's Contempt into the main board. Uh, and also against any kind of Chandra or any kind of uh, maybe a Gideon early in the game as well. So Vraska's Contempt is super Super good at doing that. Uh, and of course, it's instant speed removal. It's not three mana, sadly, but it is four mana instant speed exile removal. So if they're up against a Locust God or any kind of other recurring God, uh, Vrasix and him is gonna deal with that as well. And the last card in the sideboard is our big boy, Nico Bolas God Pharaoh. So it's a seven mana, seven loyalty planeswalker with four abilities. Uh, it's super good. It's really great against the control strategy because you have so much mana in the mid to late game uh, that you're just gonna get Nicobolas out. And because they use sensors and Supreme Wills, uh, it's gonna basically land every single time. Or they play out a uh, Torrential Gear Hulk, you're just gonna abrade it immediately. And then on your main phase two, you're gonna play a Nicobolas or something like that. So it's just really, really powerful. Uh, and I think it's one of those cards that when you bring it in, uh, you're gonna ba basically always play it and have no problem getting it out. So. Again, if you guys saw the uh, test drive, I did shoot somebody for seven for the win on game one against a control strategy. It was just devastatingly powerful. Uh, but that is the full deck list. Let me just go to the layout here. Uh, this is it right here. It's super fun. It's a little expensive at 144, 154 tickets. There, there we go. But it is one of those expensive decks that like, it's not technically top tier, but it's powerful enough to go up against top tier that I think that this might be a deck that could grow uh, as people explore Ixalan more effectively. So it's one of those decks that I think might be a tier two deck. Uh, of course, there's a deck that was similar to this called, uh, I think it was just Grixis Control or Grixis Amulet Control and it's in a Star City uh, open a couple of weeks ago, uh, but it's very different in, in the way that I built it. Uh, but at the same time, it's super, super fun. But let me know what you think of the deck. Of course, like the video if you liked it. And of course, leave a comment below on what you think of it and kind of like if you want to tweak anything about it. Uh, I know for me, I was thinking about Spell Swindle quite a bit because it does give us more treasures. Uh, and that was in the sideboard for a little bit and then kind of came out because uh, I wanted this, the sideboard to be a little, a little bit quicker on the counter control for the control matchup. Uh, but just let me know. Uh, and, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to make sure you know when we hit a upload on a video or when we go on stream. So I appreciate it guys and I will see you guys in the next video.